Yeah, what up, it's Grip. Just dropped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. It was me, myself, and young. Now my cousin, oh, yeah, that found. We see Polly, we gon' scram. I ain't never gave a down. You got Grip off the porch with us today, What's man. Man, <laughs> how you feeling today, bro? Man, I'm feeling good, brother. How you? I'm doing well, man. Appreciate uh, you coming by, man. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, I've been working on this one for a couple months. So <laughs> glad to get you on the porch, man. It's a new year. How you feeling about 2020? Oh, man. I know everybody been saying 2020 is that year, but like, I really feel it. Like, 2020 like, feels like it's, you know, like we on the break of something big, you know what I'm saying? So just want to be heard overall, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So hopefully more people hear about me in 2020 and shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had a pretty good 2019, or at least a good <laughs> yeah. way to close it out. Yeah, a good know? way to close it out. This shit. We just got to keep that shit going. No doubt. And uh, you just completed touring out in Europe. Yeah. What was uh, that experience like for you? It was fucking nuts. Like, uh, <laughs> Jid's fan base is crazy as hell. And uh, I fit right in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so it was just like, man, to see like these crowds, dog, like that. But a lot of them didn't know who the fuck I was when I first came out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just heard the. First song I would come out with was like Finesse, so they just hit a oh, really? boom, boom, and they're like, "Oh shit!" So then by the time you start getting in into it and shit, like, bro, like it was love, bro. They going crazy. Mm -hmm. They got them follow you. They follow up like the the interaction and everything. Like with those fans are just dope out there. Oh, so sure. no, nah, that shit was it was nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't wait to get back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you was able to convert them by the end of your yeah, performance, yeah. huh? No, for sure. For no, sure. That's what's Had a couple up. standing ovations and shit. Oh, you know shit, really? Yeah, dope. Dope as fuck. No, that's what's so up. Shout out to Jid. Yeah. Did it shock you that you had fans, you know, on the uh, other side of the no, world no, coming from Decatur, man? Man, no. Nah, well, shit, I think it's like, it's like a, it's like a shock, but it's like most of them will reach out to you first. Yeah. Okay. Like on Instagram and shit like, oh, I can't wait till you and motherfucking... Belgium or some shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, damn, like, and, and like last year, I couldn't, I, I was making like empty promises and shit like, hmm. oh yeah, man, I'll be out there like, ne like next year or some <laughs> shit, but like, when that shit came too, you know what I'm saying, it really came true, like, all right, bet, like, yeah. I'll see you in London in, in a couple mm. weeks type shit, so, now it's a dope feeling, bro, it's a dope feeling. Yeah, what was your favorite city to perform in? Oh, shit, um, Amsterdam turned the fuck up, all of them turned the fuck up, man, I don't yeah. know. Like, but Amsterdam was probably my favorite city overall. Just like, I had a couple extra days in there and shit. Oh, like, okay. So we, it was my first time overseas period. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, Amsterdam was dope. Uh, damn. Dublin was dope as fuck. Oh, shit, sure, yeah. Yeah, like uh, UK, uh, well, motherfucking uh, London, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. there's a lot of places though. You yeah. know what I definitely want to go back. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. yeah it sounds like the crowds look pretty crazy on crazy. that one. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. I think I'm spoiled. I feel, I feel like when I go, to, when I do the, the this American, this North American tour, yeah. I feel like I'm like, oh, like <laughs> hopefully, like I, I just build my shit up too much where I think like this is how all my crowds are gonna be like uh, until it's like my crowd type shit. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I was gonna ask, how do the crowds over there differ from the ones here in the states? Bro, they fucking bro. Every it's like they treat you as long as your shit is like good and shit. Like, bro, it's almost like. It's almost like you the man act, bro. Like they mm -hmm. they bouncing, they doing everything that you tell them to do. Oh, you know what I'm saying? They fucking moshing and shit. It's like crazy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it, like I said, it, it could spoil you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it could kind of give you like it could kind of give you like a, a a false sense of like what what things will be. Because in, in America, like bro, I go to plenty of concerts and shit. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> Until the main act gets on there, like niggas ain't moving, bro. Like <laughs> niggas is not moving, so you know I don't I don't want to just like hype myself up and shit. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a favorite song to perform? Uh, Burning Mac probably because I did the hmm. second part of it acapella. Oh yeah. And that shit really like that's when that the whole set would just turn the fuck up after that shit. Like after oh, I do the acapella part, like. They going crazy and shit, and then I went from that to Yams interlude, and it's just like oh, shit. the whole set turned up. So yeah, like yeah. it was like the, the turning point every night. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, traveling overseas did that change your perspective about life? Um, yeah, and a positive and a, I wouldn't say negative. Uh, we were like five or six hours ahead every day. Okay, so like it was hard to like stay in touch with friends and family and shit. You know what I'm mm. saying? I, you know, like you calling somebody, it's goddamn four in the morning. What they at? You know, they're like, nigga, why you calling me at four in the morning? But um, it kind of just let me know that, like, when you're away or like when you're on tour, bro, it's like, 
everything stops for you. Everything stands still. But the world that you're used to, like your world keeps going, everything else keeps going. So when you get back home, yeah. you got a lot of fucking catching up to do. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing that I learned, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's a dope thing. I'll, I'll be prepared for it next time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really prepared for it this time. Okay. You know? So yeah. And, uh, you're going on tour again in March here in the States, right? Yeah. With, uh, my nigga Brent, uh, Brent Fires. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's like 75% female, uh, crowd. Really? So oh, yeah, shit. I'm gonna have to adjust a few things, but you know, <laughs> so I feel like it'll be straight. Kind of change up the set list yes, a little bit. Yes, definitely. Yeah. No mosh pits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No doubt. All uh, right. So you're from Decatur in Stone Mountain area. Yeah. What's life like over there today? Um, shit, right now I stay, shit, I stay in between like Decatur and, uh, the West End. So, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like I, I go back and forth. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much like the same, but yeah, I don't, I don't be in Stone Mountain and shit no more. Like oh, okay. that, you know what I'm saying? I have no reason to go over there no more. Mm -hmm. Nobody stays there anymore. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the West End is the West End, you know, how yeah. the West End, <laughs> you know how that shit is. Like, yeah. so. So yeah, nah, it's all good though. A yeah. lot of gentrification going on both in both areas. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say all around the city, pretty Hell much. Yeah, you know? it's just crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so how old were you when you jumped off the porch? Um, let's see. I think I lost. I lost my virginity at twelve or thirteen. <laughs> so around that time, bro, like hmm. twelve or thirteen, I jumped off there. Yeah. And and not just because I lost my virginity, but I just was doing dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. being reckless and shit. Like I say about 13, yeah. I jumped out of the porch, bro. Is there any OGs that kind of guide you when you were that age? No, not mm -hmm. necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Like if it was, it was like fam like older cousins or some shit. Yeah. But it wasn't no, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, wasn't really nobody older that we got down listening to like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the respect was there, but it wasn't no, no shit like, oh yeah, like this is, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. Like, <laughs> So we had to learn for ourselves, kind of, you know, I had to fend for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the biggest lessons you learned. Um, one of the biggest lessons I learned. Mm, so many of them. Um, kind of like, you want shit done right, you know what I'm saying? You got to do that shit yourself. It's it's so cliche, but it's it's so true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it just goes from, from, it's such a, it just works on such a broad spectrum, like from, if, if a nigga wanted to commit a murder, bro, like, you know, like the best thing to do is you do that shit your damn self and don't say nothing. <laughs> to all from that all the way to a business side of things, like, hmm. like, bro, nobody's gonna take your shit as serious as you until, you know what I'm saying, it makes sense for them to do so. So yeah. you gotta get shit done yourself. So like, that's just one of the biggest lessons I learned from a youngin, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Just like, if I needed to get shit done, like, bro, you gonna have to do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, nah, that's yeah. real right there. Yeah, that's real. All right, so I want to talk to you about this album, uh, Snub Nose, that's dropped in October. Yes, yeah, Snub Nose. This shit kind of blew me away, but so, <laughs> um, can you explain the concept behind this album? Okay, so, all right, so everybody knows what a Snub Nose is, and for those who don't, um, a Snub Nose is a, it's a thirty-eight uh, caliber, it's a revolver. Uh, a lot of them nowadays have five shots. The older ones had a lot of the older ones had six shots. Yeah, um, it was one of the first guns I ever saw. Okay. Um, and pretty much what I wanted to do was, uh, so the, these, this, these, uh, this cylinder that has these chambers in it, it revolves, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, uh, like cycles. So what I wanted to do was speak on cycles that go on in, in my community and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, all while like correlating it directly to the gun, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so it kind of revolved around the gun, uh, implemented six shots in there. Um, spoke as the gun, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. spoke from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, the gun, the motherfucking, the nigga who using the shit, mm -hmm. the, the victim, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just wanted to speak on different shit, like different cycles and bring it back full circle yeah. uh, with the six shots, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the six shot being the one that bought it all the way back uh -huh. with the kids playing in the crib at the end of it and the gun, the gun goes off and boom, it's right back. So that was pretty much my, um, my idea behind yeah. it. Um, uh, I always fucked with, uh, I gave you power by Nas. Okay. It was just one of them songs. I was like, damn, like almost like, like Stan, like a nigga not finna be able to make Stan again type shit. Like yeah. Eminem Stan. Like, but it was one of them songs. Like 
as a kid, I was like, God damn, like this nigga just spoke from the perspective of a gun. Mm -hmm. Like, and other niggas done did it, but it's like, I want I was like, fuck it. I'll do it. I'll make an album out of this shit. Like, oh, shit. so I can really goddamn like dive into it. And you know what I'm saying? Just like give people a glimpse of what it's like, where I'm from and like how this shit goes and how, how the guns and gun violence kind of affect us and shit. Yeah. Or just our mentalities behind that shit. So yeah. that was the, that was the point of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a deep ass concept. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How long did it take you to work on this album? Like a year, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. like a year. Um, on and off. Like it wasn't a, a consistent shit until we got to like the final. All right, we are like this the last lap. Like, let's got them knock this shit out. I finished the rest of it in uh, LA. Okay. Um, and recorded with a few other producers and shit. Yeah. Uh a few new artists like uh shit, Ice Cold Bishop. Mm -hmm. Um he from got out LA. Uh Armani White, you know what I'm saying? Like he was another one. Um uh Mick Jenkins. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Brought yeah. back Mick Jenkins. I haven't yeah, heard from man. him in a minute. <laughs> yeah. And uh Big Rube, of course. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like yeah. that's just something I always wanted to do is have Big Rube on the album, bro. Course, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? That dungeon family feeling and shit. So yeah, yeah it was dope. Yeah. And your previous album, Porch, was yeah. also a concept album. Yeah. <laughs> how, how challenging is it to make a concept album? Um I think just because of like how I started writing and how like imaginative my mind is and shit. Like I'm I'm big in the movies and shit. Okay. So like and I've always I've always been in the movies and like to the point where I, I've written my own like script and shit. You really? Know what I'm like, yeah, That's so it. so um I think that I create this world. Like I the concept comes from like me creating this world. Hmm. Like and 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 by, when we saying like creating as well, like the stories aren't fiction, are all fiction. Like it's it's really shit that's happened in these in these stories. But like yeah. I'm just giving you a, a like a creative way to like to take these stories in and shit. So I create this world, and uh, like once I'm in this world, I I know how like all right. So in this world, I know I want it whether I want it to be hot or cold. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like whether I want this shit to be like soulful or just like. Basically, like Porsche was way more soulful than Snub yeah. Nose was. Uh, Snow, Snub Nose was fucking like, all right, but like it's cold <laughs> and it's like hella bass and it's in your face and shit. So like, when I create these shits, I'm thinking like colors, um, <laughs> like temperatures, and you know, like and and what this world is gonna feel like, yeah. and and then I walk you through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. It's, it's fun to me. Like, it's fun. I feel like it's, I got an advantage with, with concept albums and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Really dope. Yeah. Your raps and songs are so vivid. Like, <laughs> do you, how much time do you spend on these songs? Do you go back to them and like, because you thought of another idea or um, is it? Nah, most of the time, man. Like, the first time that I lay some shit down. Yeah. Nah, Just leave it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I rarely, I can't even recall the time that I went back and like hmm. switched, like changed something that I already laid down on the beat. Okay. Because by the time I lay it down, I've listened to it so many times. Hmm. I probably already recorded at my crib, rode around to it in a whip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it sticks. Hmm. But if I don't feel like it sticks, then I just don't use the song. Oh, okay. Or I just end up using a verse on a feature or some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. yeah. Were you hands on with the production or? Um, my guy, too. Um, two is uh, my main man, like, my main producer and shit. Um, me and him sit down and like, just really like go through it and try okay. to figure out what sound we trying to bring out mm -hmm. and shit and what other what other uh, instrumentals from outside producers fit with what, what, what I'm going for and shit. So like, yeah, uh, but I, re I really want to get more into like the production side of shit. Like okay. I just picked up piano and shit. So, hmm. you know what I'm saying? By the time, by the time my next album come out, bro, like expect to have <laughs> me playing on the keys on that motherfucker. So, um, I definitely want to, um, pick up multiple instruments and, oh, sure. you know what I'm saying? Just evolve as an artist and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fire right there. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk about some of these songs on here. Let's mm -hmm. start with the first one. He is, I am. Yeah. Once I heard this one, I was like, all right, he's <laughs> on to something. Like, so where did this, this concept come from where, you know, you're rapping about the gun, then yeah. from the perspective of the gun right. snub. Um, so like he is, I am was pretty much like the sample at the beginning is like a gospel sample where it's like soulful and it's, and it's, and it's telling, it's saying like, he's my savior. Yeah. Um, so spoke on the gun, like being 
like this protector, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, for me personally, like you've protected me in these, in these situations, but I also know like that, you know what I'm saying? Like the violence that you've wrong and you know what I'm saying? Just like the chaos that you've caused, like for me being a kid hearing stories or, or you know what I'm saying? Knowing a kid who got hit by a straight bullet or yeah. whatever the case may be, like, and even though you've protected me, like I know what you're capable of. So I respect you, but you know what I'm saying? At the same time, it's like, like I hate your ass type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and then I end the verse with, uh, like I always keep you with me. Like, cause you never know if that bitch got a nigga or an ex that got an extra key from when he stayed with her. Yeah. Um, cause it came from a store like back in the day, like, hmm. and the nigga didn't have an extra key, you know what I'm saying? But the nigga meal kicking the door when I'm in, when I'm in the crib with a chick this oh, is years back. Hmm. All right. So that was just always something I was like, man, that'd be fine to write about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but just in that situation, you want to strap on you. And so then when it, when it transitions, it's just this menacing, these menacing scents and this, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, oh shit, like, I'm like, welcome to hell, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's when Lil Snub, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's not introduces itself as kind of like the, the devil on the left shoulder, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, where it's just on some shit like, nigga, you need me. Like, this is who yeah. I am. Like, just like this small voice, but such a big personality. Yeah. And, and just, just like, my bro, like shoot this nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a bad, a bad vibe that it gives off and shit. So like, that's how the first shit started. And, um, it was crazy. Like that wasn't even the first song originally, hmm. but we, we was like, all right, this shit fits as an intro. So yeah. it's cool. It, it ended up working out. Yeah. 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 Kind of reminded me of the old Cameron song, Death. Death. Okay. Do you remember that one? Yeah. I remember that shit. And somebody else said, uh, the DMX. DMX. Damien. Damien. Yeah. yeah. Like somebody else said one of those shit. So, yeah. yeah. It's been a while since someone's pulled that off. Yeah, man. And you killed it. <laughs> it's like, you got to, you got to try shit. You know, yeah. you try new shit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, nah, it definitely worked out as, yeah. a, as the intro track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you brought Snub back for the next one. Yeah. Um, Snub Speaks. Snub Speaks, yeah. yeah. And it starts off with a Goody Mob reference. Yeah. So how influential was Dungeon Family to, to your music and to your upbringing? Oh, uh, man, very. Um, yeah. Like I said, Three Stacks is my favorite rapper of all time, okay. bro. So, yeah. um, And these are things that just like, these songs just like, they just like sit in my head. Like all like all of that shit from back in the day. Like I, I can remember like riding up to the store and the shit playing on the radio or, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just like shit like that. Or my sister having posters up on the wall and shit or just having the latest goddamn album and I got to take the shit and, you know what I'm saying? Reading through the booklet and shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So like all of that shit just like, it means a lot to me. I yeah. think it got them shaped uh, who I am musically, you know yeah. what I'm saying, today. So I try to got them, you know what I'm saying? Pay homage whenever I can and shit, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, then you got the, uh, Big Rube interlude. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, now the, the thing with that shit is, originally, it, like I don't know. I think he was gonna be the first, the first thing that you heard on the album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because that's uh, how the the old Goody Mob. Yeah, exactly. So, but but I was just like, man, let's do something different. Like, hmm. so I had him speak on that first part, and it was dope because I actually got you know what I'm saying him to pull up to the uh, studio and shit, and. Uh, I didn't have him pull up to the crib. I had a studio at the crib, but it's like smack dab in the hood. But I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, I ain't going to have Big Rube pulling up to this shit. <laughs> so I, I, get, I rent the studio out. You know, he pulls up and shit. I'm like, yeah, man, like, like I got this spot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want you to pull up to the crib thinking like, what the fuck going on? So he's like, where you staying? I told him I stay. He's like, nigga, I stay like three minutes down the road. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so nah, it was cool. Uh, and I played him the album. Okay. And then... uh. He shot, he shot that shit to me. Hmm. Um, and it was dope because like one listen, he took in so much shit that I had said throughout the, and the album wasn't even complete when I, when I played it for him. Okay. It was like seven songs when I played it for him. That's you know what it. I'm saying? So for him to have come up with, you know what I'm saying? That and, and it matched with everything was dope as fuck. Yeah. Um, and then our second half came with the, with the, uh, feeling like Trayvon with the song. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a quick story. You know what I'm saying? Just about goddamn. A nigga trying to rob you, but you got them. Yeah. Pop his ass, and he just happens to be a young ass kid. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, but that's how this shit go. Yeah. But yeah. So what was it like working with Big Rube? You know, I'm sure. <sighs> it was know. dope, man. Yeah. A stand up, stand up, motherfucker, man. We sat in there and and, and drank and talked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool, cool, motherfucker, man. OG. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? OG for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, it was dope. It was dope. We definitely got down 
want to work with them again. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Now that's what's up. All right. Next one I want to talk to you about is uh, Pressed. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned depression, writing raps while living in your car, mm -hmm. losing relationships because of the focus on music. Yeah. That's just in the first verse. Yeah. How emotional <laughs> was that song when you were recording and uh, writing it? Damn. I don't know, man. It was like, like the sample just bought something out of me, bro. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> like, and uh, I don't know. It was, it was just the truth. So it was easy to write. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It was easy to write because it was just like, these were all just like real ass things that I'm I'm dealing with directly and shit. So yeah. it was so easy to just like jot this shit down. And then <laughs> like, all right, bet, like, like, cause it was, it was real. Just like, it's been time when a nigga, it was like, bro, like staying in my car type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like sleeping in my damn back seat or whatever. Um, and even like the depression shit. Like I feel like more people are, are depressed than we would want to admit, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and, but we just deal with shit differently. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, me going in the session is like me recording music is therapeutic. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, some people don't have that outlet. So, yeah. you know, some people listen to music for, as therapy and shit. So like, you know, we wanted to speak on a lot of shit yeah. um, and just how we came up broken shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we wanted to speak on that shit, give people a look out now, give people a little bit of me. Um, yeah. That's what that shit was. Yeah, that yeah. shit was dope. And you also you. mentioned uh, going to college and catching a charge. Oh yeah. What were sure. you studying? Oh uh, shit, man. I wasn't even trying to go to college. I got I got into college on some fluke shit. Uh, <laughs> originally I wasn't even, I, bro, I was in high school, senior year with, I didn't know what the hell I was finna do. Like I wanted to think about college though, but <laughs> uh, what was it? Mass communications. Cause you okay. know, everybody got there and go to school for it. So yeah, yeah man, I got kicked out. <laughs> what when does school start like august or September. i got kicked out in november oh shit <laughs> yeah yeah it's fucked up but yeah yeah where'd don't, you go to, don't situation where'd you go to school at lane college in uh tennessee oh shit it's an hbcu smack dab in the hood hmm. yeah, why'd you man. choose there i didn't like i said it was some fluke shit man my cousin <laughs> got in and his mama you know what oh, I'm okay like, Talk to the mother whoever you got me do into that motherfucker, right? like yeah. got me into that shit like i learned i learned the last <laughs> Couple of weeks, like yo, yeah, you going to college? Like, oh yeah. shit, like yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it all shaped me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But that, and uh, you just put out the music video for Yams Interlude. Yeah, um, can we expect more visuals from that? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, definitely. That tour kind of. Well, I had it done before tour. I shot it before tour, hmm. um, and just held on to it for a second. I want to okay. finish up the short film too, like part two and part three. Also. Okay. I shoot a few more videos just for you know send some of the other songs and shit like yeah. i said i'm trying to push this shit all year okay yeah but i'm trying to push out those all year bro yeah yeah no nah, it's such a dope album that yeah, you know you. definitely deserves putting some time yeah, in man. it gotta give it gotta give it the 2020 legs yeah Let it run through 2020 and shit yeah and you mentioned the film you dropped part one i think right when you dropped the album too yeah um yeah. for people who may have seen the film or who haven't seen part one can you kind of explain the concept of what's going uh, on yeah the so the concept of that shit um uh, you got the little kid watching TV uh, at the crib, and he's just like very into this shit. And you got the 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 rapper, you know, what I'm saying who's the puppet, and then you have the white puppet master. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty much just like for me, it's the agenda that you know, what I'm saying the industry is pushing, you know, what I'm saying to the kids, yeah. like, and that's why the song's called No Info because that's yeah. the exact agenda that they not no info. The kids aren't getting any information from from music nowadays and shit. Hmm. Um, and one thing I don't think a lot of people notice is that when the kid is watching TV in the living room, the boy on the on the puppet is by himself. He doesn't see the puppet master. Hmm. Like, but we see the we yeah. see the puppet master. But like, if you look at the video, yeah, he's he, dancing on stage. He's dancing on it, but there's no there's no puppet master around him. So it's like the kid is believing this shit. You know hmm. what I'm saying? Pretty much already. Um, and just like the the video is about influence, yeah. um, from outside and from inside the home because hmm. the uncle comes in. I don't know what he's did yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's why I'm gonna tie it back in with the other films. Okay. Um, he could come in the crib. He go straight to the bathroom. He, Pull this, put this strap down. He got blood on his shirt. Yep. He, he tripping. He spazzing. Like, oh shit! I don't, like, what the fuck have I done? Type shit. Yeah. And he puts the gun up and he leaves. But as he leaves, the kid is already like down the hallway, kind of like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. So he walks in the room, and when he walks in the room, it's red. 
There's like a loss of innocence and just mm-hmm. danger. So the mm-hmm. room is red. And he can almost feel the gun up on top of that dresser. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like I, I wanted to speak on influence um inside and outside of the household, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, for for kids. Um and also, uh, like I said, no info, like yeah. Like no info. Like that's that was the main thing. <laughs> How yeah. we, the kids don't get information these days, type shit. So yeah, yeah. That's the next song I want to talk to you about. Is <laughs> no info <laughs> too. Um, so you rap about a few different things. You rap about rappers promoting clothes, designer clothes yeah. that the listener can't even afford. Right, right. Yeah, and that's been a thing for a long ass time. Yeah, but you know, what I'm saying somebody got to speak on that shit, man. Hmm. Like you know, what I'm saying like, and these motherfuckers don't give a fuck about us. You know, what I'm saying yep. so like we 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 promoting that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, for no reason. Like, yeah. like we saw the shit with Gucci. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just little shit that, that motherfuckers do, just, just like, yo, we not fucking with y'all. Y'all yeah. don't spend this money still, though, but mm-hmm. we don't fuck with y'all. Right? Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of stupid. They yeah. should just, like, promote their own brands and shit. Yeah. You know? All right. But that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, going back to how influential music can be, um, do you feel like these kids are being led the wrong way on purpose or is it just everyone copying know. what they see? Yeah, anyway? I, don't, I don't even think it's on purpose. Like, I don't feel like like a, a, a new artist who just happens to be 20 or 19 gets this bag and is just like, oh, I'm finna fuck up the minds of the youth. Nah, I don't like that. But at that age, you know what I'm saying, getting thrown aback, what else do you have? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you have? What else are you gonna say? You just gonna say what you what you know, like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and in hindsight, maybe when you got them a little older, it might be like, oh damn, like. But at that at that point in time, you just making music. So you're not thinking about that shit. And you just got a bag. Or you trying to get to a bag. So, mm-hmm. you know, like all the motherfuckers just like casualties of war. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I feel like that's that's what it is. But it's definitely influential a little bit, man. Like, I feel like Motherfuckers take drugs, take certain drugs just because I hear the shit in songs and shit. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. I ain't saying that shit just making niggas go kill each other, but just like, come on, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why you started doing this shit? Why you started taking these, these pills or, or sipping, sipping, laying or some shit? Cause you heard the shit in music. Yeah. And you think the niggas is cool and you think you'll be cool if you do the shit or you want to try the shit. So yeah, it was definitely influential. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, do you feel a responsibility not to lead your listeners down the wrong path like that? Nah, not necessarily. Like, okay. what they do is what they do. Yeah. I'm just not gonna got down, you know what I'm saying? Like, talk that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, me personally, I'm just gonna play my part. Hmm. You feel me? Like, but if niggas wanna do this shit, that's on them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm responsible for my motherfucking kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't too worried about that shit. But like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what I, I'm gonna speak my truths. And if people got no gravitate towards it, and cool, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's all I can ask for. Yeah, no, yeah. that's real right there. That's real. All right. Um, you also rap about how labels are exploiting and finessing these young kids yeah. to sign their life away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what should an artist know before they take a meeting with a um, major label? They should always have a fucking a, a fucking lawyer. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, and don't don't just jump on a. You know what I'm saying? Don't just sign at a drop of a dime and shit. Like, really, like, weigh your options and shit. And uh, see how far you can get by yourself first. Yeah. The more leverage you come to the table with, mm-hmm. the better chances that you don't get fucked. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, that's some, some decent advice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's so much more I can, I will be sitting here forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was Master P even said, like, they were trying to give him a million. He was like, well, he was like, they want to well, give me a million. Exactly. I'm worth probably a lot more exactly. than that. Exactly. Like, know? he, bro, pioneer. He hipped us to that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Him, baby, Jay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so that was dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, it started in the South. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, shit. shit dope. Yeah. Dope. Okay. Um, so it's safe to say you're not in a rush to sign with a major label at uh, all. Not necessarily. Um, if if the shit makes sense, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like for me and for for the people who I'm trying to get down, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that they good and, you know what I'm saying? Put on or whatever. If it makes sense, cool. Yeah. But, you know, I ain't just trying to be locked into some shit forever. Yeah. I always want creative control. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not, I'm not rushing to do anything. Yeah. 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 Um, Stray Society, is yeah. that your label? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when'd you like, launch that? 
Um, about like 2017, maybe. Okay. 2017. Um, and pretty much just what it is, the reason behind the, the name um, or the meaning behind the name is um, like stray. A stray is like, you know, it's just something that's, it's a barren, it goes a barren of, of a path or mm -hmm. it's just like random as hell. So like, uh, I feel like nowadays being yourself is like taboo. Hmm. Like, like, that's why nobody sounds alike. Like, everybody hmm. dressed the same. Everybody got them look the same. Yeah. All this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like if you're truly yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got them, you're, you're astray. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're going astray. You're not doing what everybody else is doing. Everybody's being fucking puppets and shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, straight society was just like started because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm. just embrace your true self and shit. Like, yeah. So that's what that is. So um, started that, uh, got the homies right now, you know what I'm saying, cooking up and shit. Okay. Like niggas know like, all right, bro, like right now we are gonna push my shit cause this was that bubbling and shit. Yeah. And when, when the time comes and shit, we gonna unleash, you know what I'm saying, that shit. So it'll be cool. Yeah, to open up doors for everyone else. Exactly, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. All right, uh, breakdown. Next one we'll talk to you about. Um, favorite song. You re really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you rep out, um, you said, had a kid and thought it was over. Um, thought my plans were defeated. Yeah. How old were you when you had your first child? 23. 23? Yeah. Why'd you think that was the end? Um, <laughs> because at the time, it was like, all right, now it's real responsibilities kick in. Hmm. Now, nigga, go get a job. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, a, a go get a real job type shit. Like, uh, and to me, for me, a nigga who had got kicked out of college and just had a goddamn high school diploma, it was, Oh, that's warehouse work. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you see niggas working at, you know, where we at, you know, this is that Westgate and Seagate, all them Kroger, Kroger warehouses and yeah. shit, bro. Like, I done been in and out of all of them shits, bro. And, hmm. uh, just working just random fucking jobs, temp services and shit. Yeah. And it was just like, yo, like, damn, like, I really got to got them, like, provide for a child right now. I'm fucking 23. I was still a fucking kid myself. Yeah. Like, blowing my money on bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, that shit was just on some awesome shit where it really, you know, it slowed the process down. But at the end of the day, in hindsight, it was great for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it was great for me. So, you know, I thought it was I thought it was over, bro. You know, I thought yeah. my plans were defeated. Yeah. And and I was getting fucked up, couldn't be the the man that she needed, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, uh, but the the song is pretty much just about like understanding where I fucked up at. And not necessarily saying that I would do things differently because of where I'm at now, but saying that I do understand that it fucked you up and you may resent me and I understand that. And sometimes yeah. that shit breaks me down. Like it hurts me, hmm. you know what I'm saying? To know that I did this shit, like I'm responsible for this or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that, that that was the concept behind that shit. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your most personal song you would say? Um, today, to date. Uh, on on that on that album, yeah. Yeah. Uh These Eyes on Porch is pretty Okay. It's pretty personal. And other shit that hasn't been released, you know what I'm saying? Like got shit to okay. dive into. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like so. But nah, I definitely uh that's definitely my favorite song right now though. Yeah. <laughs> and what is a father being or what has being a father taught you about life and about yourself as well? Mm. Um You gotta well, you have to Watch what you do, watch yeah. what you say, but you all you always gotta stand behind your word. So your actions gotta gotta match that shit. You can't tell somebody, you can't sit there and tell somebody not to do some shit and you turn around and do some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like so your words like have to be backed by action. Yeah. That's one of the main things, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause kids are highly influenced, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so that's one of the things. That's the main thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. And I see online you've gotten a, a lot of incredible feedback from this album. Yeah. What's it been like, you know, getting seeing that, you know, your concept reached these people and they actually understood <laughs> it? Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's love, man. Like, because when you, it's always hell. Like, it's like this, this weird feeling, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like before it drops, you like, like damn, I hope people, I hope people fuck with it. I hope people get it. Fuck it. Uh, I don't give, if they don't, they don't. Like yeah. you know, what I'm saying, it's just like you're you're in and out of it. Uh, but now it's been dope. Um, a few people, 
like have like literally tried to break the album down to me like in my in my messages and shit you know what i'm saying like oh yeah some of them are damn they're close but you know like when i explain it to them they're like oh fuck okay i get it like <laughs> but nah definitely um it's definitely dope man to see people gravitate into it you know what i'm saying taking to it and shit uh it's dope bro because i i literally when it when the album stopped when you heard that last gunshot it's like Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how I started this shit off, hey, y'all didn't want to see my uncle keep his gun? Yeah. I cut it. And I went, you don't hear it again to the end of the album. So, mm -hmm. like, I feel like that was just one that was just like that last punch, like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, okay, I get it. So, no, it's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely pulled it off, bro. Oh, man, definitely I appreciate that off. shit. <laughs> um, so, do you plan to only do concept albums or what's the next one? Um, I'm not sure yet. Well, I got, a, I got a title for it and I got a concept for something, but that might just be an EP. Okay. Um, right now, just working on some loose shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like with the homies and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just to throw some shit out. You know, let people hear different shit. Yeah. Uh, but no, I definitely got, I got like a couple in the chamber. Okay. For them, no pun intended. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, I got, a, I got a couple that's gonna, that could fuck people up. So. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, you think you'll drop another project, whether it's an EP this year or will it be next year? Like you said, you kind of want to push Snub Nose this yeah, year. Yeah, if an EP comes, it could be this year, like later this year. Okay. Uh, but like I said, man, like as many people as heard Snub Nose, nobody's heard that shit. Yeah, it's you know true. What I'm yeah. Like a lot of people have heard it, but it's still like, bro, like nobody knows who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> we do, yeah, you yeah. do. Like and I, and I appreciate that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So everybody who's reached out so far and shit, like that's dope. There's like so many people that haven't heard this shit. Oh, yeah. I don't want that shit to fall on deaf ears. Nah, no you doubt. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I wanted it to count. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I want that shit to count. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, last question. What's some goals for you for 2020? Uh get, get my music heard more. Uh, yeah. but the ultimate goal for me is Snout Nose Tour. Okay. <laughs> Snow Nose Tour, bro. Like, that's my ultimate goal um for 2020 and uh put my niggas in position to win you know what i'm saying like in better positions uh music my full-time job so that's that's already something that i accomplished last well last year 2018 really uh nah bro snub nose tour that's yeah. the, i'm speaking into existence nah definitely. that's it right manifest there. it <laughs> yeah man for real that's good that's the one so that's my main goal uh Oh yeah, probably put out another beer. You know, uh, I'm, I'm oh really? A beer and shit. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So yeah, probably put out another one. Uh, yeah. What's the one you have out now? A snub no stop. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. It actually releases. Uh, we gonna release it late February. Okay. So yeah, bro, you get an invite to pull up to the. Uh, you know, yeah, some absolutely. Release and shit. And, yeah. Yeah, man. How'd that come about? Uh, I'm a beer kind of sewer, but I fuck with beer heavy. Yeah. And um, I think Nappy Roots had a release for a beer at Scott's okay. Law, and um. I ended up running into some gypsy brewers who brew, who brew beer. Oh shit! And uh, yeah, dog, like told them about my vision and shit. And, yeah, you know, we ended up linking up and told them what I what I wanted it to taste like. And it's a peanut butter and jelly stout, so it's really dope, you know what I'm saying because mm -hmm. I speak about PBJ in the album as well. Like, yeah. It's just one of those childhood snacks that you was like always yeah. had type shit. So like, I wanted to like you know get remnants of my past. You know what I'm yeah. saying through the beer and shit. So yeah. It actually tastes good as fuck. So <laughs> they got it down. They, yeah, they were yeah, able to yeah, yeah. They got get it, that they flavor down. Got it down packed, man. So That's yeah, what's up. Um, yeah, bro. Smell nice tour and another beer. Okay. That's my goals for the year. Good shit, bro. Man, I appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, Grip? Um, shit, man. The people can follow me. <laughs> yeah. Logan Grip uh, on Instagram. G R I P G R I P yeah. underscore S S on Twitter and Grip on. All streaming platform. That's it. <laughs> All right, cool. It was me, myself, and young. Now my cousin, oh, yeah, that found. We see poly, we gon' scram. I ain't never gave a down. Pulled to that sick, go get knocked out. Nigga, pull a kid, though.